G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can take away knee pain when going downstairs. Now obviously this same information will apply to going upstairs or going up and down a hill or anything related to that movement pattern. But I want to cover three really important exercises that you can do today that should have an instant effect on how it feels to go downstairs. And the reason for this is irrespective of the dysfunction that you have in your knee, there's generally some mechanical issues with the entire leg, not just the knee itself, which change the way that you load your knee, but are ultimately more exposed when stepping down to something. But getting into it, the first thing that we need to understand when going downstairs is the mechanism that's involved. Now, obviously I don't have a stair right now, but what we see when we're stepping down is the leg that remains on the step, you need an awful lot of ankle range of motion to allow you to lower yourself down to the step below. And what this can also mean is we often see that the knee can translate very easily over the toe as you're lowering yourself down, which can put a tremendous amount of shearing stress down through the knee as you're going downstairs. So if you're someone who has like a meniscal issue or some patellofemoral joint pain or you've had a knee replacement, whatever it is, going downstairs requires a certain amount of mechanical function to do successfully. And if you don't quite have that in the moment, then it can really expose an underlying issue that you have or create one potentially over time. But what's really important to reinforce here is that going downstairs is normal, going downhill is normal, stepping down from something is a normal expression of human function and lower limb mechanics. And if it doesn't feel comfortable for you at the moment, it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing for you to do. It may ultimately be something that you can't quite do at the moment, but it's 100% something that you should be able to tolerate at some point if your mechanics are good enough. So going downstairs with knee pain doesn't mean that either your knee is bad or that going downstairs is bad. It's just exposing something that we need to change in order to bring you up to a capacity that can tolerate that as quickly as possible. So the first exercise that we want to work on here is we want to take a broad approach. We know that going downstairs will bend your knee, which is part of the reason why a lot of people feel soreness in this position. But what often gets lost a lot is when you're lowering yourself down a step, you also need a very strong amount of ankle mobility to allow your shin to move forwards and lower yourself down. Obviously, you can lift your heel up, but if you don't have a large amount of ankle range or enough range of motion at your ankle, then a lot of the force can then be put up through the knee as well as the force going down through the knee, which can really expose some of that dysfunction. So the first exercise that we want to get you to do here is the banded ankle stretch that we've done a lot on the channel before. We want to get the band pulling behind you, making sure that it's fixed to something that's not going to move. And if I can change legs just to make this one the same as what I was doing before, we want to leave the, the ankle behind you, step forward with your other foot, and then we don't want to lunge forward. We almost want to drop down and really bias the bend in the ankle more so than the bend in the knee. We can stay here and allow the band to pull on that ankle capsule, de-stiffen that joint to a degree. We can very, very gently and respectfully oscillate in and out of that end range of ankle motion to encourage that tissue to move better and move further than it did before. All the while making sure that when we're doing this, we're not allowing the knee to cave in. We're keeping it out and almost going through a almost out towards the little toe uh, direction as opposed towards the big toe. And then after about 30 seconds to a minute of doing this, what you'll hopefully feel is if you were to go downstairs again, you should automatically feel like there's far more range of motion in your ankle and less tension going through your knee. So that banded ankle stretch is really important to do to feed some slack up into the knee from below because something like going downstairs requires so much more ankle range of motion than some people tend to have that the knee tends to cop a lot more of that uh, force and that dysfunction uh, than it deserves to. So with the next exercise, we want to attack some of the hidden dysfunction that might be above the knee, pulling some slack out of that joint, much like the stiff ankle could be from below. And the way that this generally tends to work is if you can imagine that because we tend to do a lot of sitting in our day these quads and these hip flexors can genuinely get tighter and stiffer than they should be. And what that mechanically does is as soon as we add some tightness into the system, we're essentially pulling a little bit more slack and increasing the amount of tension that's going through the knee. So again, if you can imagine much like a stiff ankle, if you've got this stiff sort of tightness in your thigh and you go to step down, all of a sudden there's this extra tension pulling through the knee 
It has the potential to expose your knee pain or your knee dysfunction in ways that you don't deserve. And again, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know that the best exercise to, to quickly free up your quads and your hip flexors is the couch stretch. And all the couch stretch tends to be is you want to get your knee right into the back corner of your chair or your seat. So again, this would be the seat of the chair, this would be the back of the chair, the wall. And then what we want to get you to do is start relatively horizontal because this can feel quite tender. And then very gently just extend up from your hip as far as you feel comfortable until you can expose some of the tightness down the front of your thigh um, or down towards the knee. And like we always tend to do with this exercise, wherever you feel that tightness, try and tense that tightness up. So you might need to push your foot back into the wall, you might need to squeeze your butt cheek, you might just need to try and sort of dig your knee in and pull it forwards. Do whatever you can to activate and actively tense that tissue, hold it for a couple of seconds and then relax. And then you might find you can go a fraction further into the stretch than what you could before. Now, obviously by nature of this video, if you do have a sore knee, it might be more helpful to have a pillow or a cushion here so that you can go up into that position. Just know as well, one of the things that tends to put people off doing the couch stretch is the feeling that you're putting too much pressure down through your knee. But the interesting thing about the couch stretch is that most of the pressure should go above your knee. So that you, when you're in this sort of corner position where your chin's vertical up against the back of the chair or the wall, we're not down on top of the knee. We're almost in front of the knee, so the pressure should be above that kneecap. So obviously when you're in this position, I don't feel like the pressure's going straight down through there. You want to start here, and then as you sort of angle back up again, you will feel like the tension is above that kneecap and a lot more tolerable for you. And then again, once you've done that, if you can head back to your stairs again, and what you should feel immediately is once your ankle's a little bit looser and the tissue that feeds into your knees a little bit looser, it should automatically feel freer and looser and easier to step down a step and hopefully you don't feel that knee pain as much as you would um, otherwise. So those two exercises are really crucial in trying to take away some of those hidden handbrakes it might be robbing you of slack going into that knee, potentially causing some of the reasons why your knee's sore, but definitely exposing any soreness that you might have at the same time. Now, the third thing that I want to show you is we definitely want to make sure that you are addressing the knee itself. We, we can't basically have a video on trying to solve knee pain when going downstairs without talking about the knee specifically. What I tend to find a lot is just through modern living, the way that we tend to move, the mechanics that we tend to have, it's very easy to start to accrue some tightness and some restriction at the tissue that inserts into the outside of the knee. And this can be the ITB, it can be your quads muscle, it can be your hamstrings, it doesn't matter what it is. We want to be able to find any of those restrictions, respectfully take it away, and then feed even more slack into the knee to allow the knee to do what it needs to do. And one of the best ways I've found to do this, and you can do this with a foam roller as well if you want to, but with any type of ball, if you place the ball just on the outside of your thigh, so not right on the top, not right on the side, but sort of in that uh, 45 degree angle, and hopefully you can see this, but we want to place the ball into that part of your body. You can either have your foot behind you or in front of you. Ideally, I'd have you with your foot in front of you, but just so you can see me do this, I'll have it behind. And we want to get you to roll onto the ball, find a spot that feels a little bit tight, a little bit restricted, and then what I want you to do is gently try and bend and flex that knee while keeping the tension on the ball, the pressure on the ball, and shear that tissue free. You can use a tennis ball if a lacrosse ball is too tender for you. You can use a softer ball if it works for you. As I said, you can definitely use a roller if you want to as well. It's all the same idea. All we're trying to get you to do is just find a spot that feels tight, not roll on it, but just gently then use movement to shear that tissue free. And then what you'll hopefully find again after doing that is once you've found and eliminated some of the tightnesses around the top and the side of that knee, then again, once again, when you go down that step again, it should feel both smoother, maybe even stronger, hopefully less painful uh, than it was prior to doing each one of these exercises. So, so I strongly urge you is that if you're going to do these exercises, test yourself out on a step of some sort, even if it's just stepping off a a block or stepping down a curb or something like that, get a strong sense of how you feel first. And if possible, recheck that exact same motion every single time you do these exercises so that you can see exactly what effect each one is having. And I'd be interested to know down in the comments below which of those three exercises, whether it's the ankle stretch, the couch stretch, or just the ball into the knee, 
gave you the most symptomatic relief and which one made your leg move the best relative to the others. Because when we're trying to solve these issues, we want to make sure that you have a very clear understanding of what you're doing and what effect that has on your symptoms so that you can get there as quickly as possible. So I genuinely hope that was helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments down below. Consider leaving a like rating on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new, particularly if you like this type of content and you have any other aches and pains that you might want to try and learn a little bit more about, maybe gain a different perspective on. And if you did genuinely find the information in this video helped remove some of your symptoms when going downstairs, please consider leaving a super thanks donation on the video. It's just a great way to help support the channel. It allows me to keep making these videos day to day. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.